A man with cerebral palsy was left to crawl out of a United Airlines flight because they did not get him a special wheelchair in time to get him off the flight. DRC Neal was the person who needed to get off the flight immediately because he needed to use the restroom. Now, apparently, because of his uh, disability, he's unable to use the restroom in the airport, uh, in the flight. So mm -hmm. he had to wait until they landed, and of course, he had to use the restroom because it was a long flight. And when he asked, hey, uh, what's up, where's the wheelchair, I need to get off, apparently they had told him, oh, it's going to take 15 to 20 minutes. Um, according to the uh, to Raw story, he was informed that it would take another 15 to 20 minutes for the device to be brought back. Apparently they had said that they didn't need the device, and they took it away, and then they're like, mm -hmm. oh, crap, we made a mistake, we need it back. On top of the 20 minutes, he had already waited while all of the other passengers disembarked. Okay, and we all know that that takes a very long time. Neil was reduced to crawling half the length of the plane down the aisle and to the doorway where his regular wheelchair waited. Now, this is apparently a very common issue when it comes to flying. A lot of disabled people have to deal with a lot of obstacles in order to get around and to travel. Last year, more than 27,500 disability-related complaints were filed with the Department of Transportation. Yeah. Uh, look, we just need to treat each other with uh, a little bit more decency. Uh, and. I get it, you've got bureaucracy, and it's not like they told the guy, hey, we're never going to get you the wheelchair. Uh, and that, that did happen in another story we mm -hmm. covered recently, where the woman was disabled and had to crawl out of the, the plane. Um, but at the same time, understand that the guy hasn't been able to go to the restroom for a long time. He's obviously in a tough spot. Can someone step up and go, hey, you know what, I maybe it's not my job, but I'm going to go out of my way to make sure that you... We get that wheelchair back for you as soon as possible, right? Um, don't just pass it off and be like, yeah. hey, man, hey, that's procedure, man. 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, you're going to have to wait another 15, 20 minutes, and that's the way it is. Can we care about each other? Is it? I, I, I always feel like, is it too much to ask for? And oftentimes the answer is apparently yes. Yeah, so it's, it's already bad enough when it comes to normal, everyday situations, but it's amplified whenever it comes to flying. Because with flying, I don't know if it's because more and more airlines are buying one another out and there's more and more monopolies when it comes to traveling from certain destinations. But it's, it's incredible how little they care about customer service, how little they care about making sure that people are comfortable. Think about how expensive it is to fly. And I know that a lot of people make the argument that, hey, you know, with gas prices, a lot of airlines are actually losing money. But no, they're still turning a profit, right? And it, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on that ticket. They still treat you like you're a sardine. They still treat you like you're a nameless, fa faceless person who depends on them, who has no other choice but to rely on them. And I hate that. I hate feeling like customer service isn't important to them. So, of course, it's not the case in uh, all instances. And uh, I just had a flight attendant, Andre, at uh, Virgin America, who uh, watches the show. Is a great guy. Was super, super helpful. Mm -hmm. And that's for me, it's actually... Uh, more often than not, the flight attendants are, are terrific. And not because they recognize me, Andre, or happen to, but, but they most of the time are very friendly. But in the instances you get flight attendants who are not, it does really get maddening. There's some mm -hmm. that feel like, and I know they say, and we got people writing in telling us, you don't know what a pain in the ass the customers. Okay. Look, I actually don't doubt that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are a lot of people on the flights who get cranky and who are not predisposed to being nice in the first place. And you got to deal with that stuff. But that is part of your job. And we can't have you striking back. And we certainly can't have it in the case of disabled people. Mm -hmm. Like, if anything, you got to go more out of your way to make sure they're all right. Uh, in this case, uh, he's, it turns out, a last piece of irony, he's a disability rights activist. And he had gone to San Francisco to give a speech on accessible transit. It's and then amazing. this happened to him. Yeah. Now, look, United did everything they could to make things right later. They apologized. Uh, they gave him $300, a $300 refund. Mm -hmm. um, and he said that this had actually happened to him before, and other airlines didn't even want to make things right with him, right? They didn't mm -hmm. want to communicate with him. They didn't care. So he was really happy that they at least apologized. But just going back to what you said earlier, Jake, just have a little compassion for other people. Be a little more considerate of other people, right? Mm -hmm. Even if they have that one and only flight and they desperately need it, doesn't matter. Don't take advantage of that situation. And you're right. I mean, I, I flew Virgin America just recently, and they're great. Like, sometimes you have really good experiences with certain airlines, but sometimes you have terrible experiences where you're like, wow, do they even care about treating me like a human being right now? Yeah. And, okay, one super last thing. Uh, that's 
it, it's an issue we've touched on before. Uh, and so I, I get, hey, look, they want to make more money, so they're squeezing in the seats a little bit more, and we've talked about it. There's also this thing called calculated misery, mm -hmm. where they try to make you more miserable so that you'll upgrade, right? You'll upgrade your seat, you'll upgrade to checking in your carry-on bag. That sometimes they make those areas smaller. Yes, Just yes, so you get do. frustrated, so that you got to check it in and pay $25, mm -hmm. right, each way uh, for the bags. And that list of calculated misery goes on and on. So that's why the airline industry gets more complaints than other industries, because they intend it. They're doing that, it on purpose. They're yeah. doing it on purpose so that you'll pay them more. So when you know that, it's impossible not to get even angrier at